Welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Big review today. This is the FX Pantera 700 FAC in 25 caliber. Now, a lot of people reviewed this and they saw it quite early on. I actually kind of went the other way around because I actually had the dynamic first and I had a sub 12 foot pound dynamic, which to be fair, I actually had quite a, I was quite fond of. It was very compact, very light, very handy. And one of my favorite FX rifles overall, but it was the 177, it was sub 12, and you do kind of get used to FAC power on air rifles. So it was interesting to go over to the Pantera and see just what all the hype has been about. There are lots of details to cover about this. You can see all those in the link down below on the FX website, but I'm gonna tell you a lot more about my personal experiences with it. With it. It's got a 700 millimeter barrel. You can have it in 500 or 600 millimeter versions and it's got a full shroud over the top of it. This actually contains 156 um, cc plenum as well. It's screw cut at the front half inch, so you can put a moderator on it and you'll see in the video, you can see with the moderator on off, it has a significant effect on the actual volume this thing produces because it is quite loud and at full power without the moderator, I was actually using ear defenders with it. Now, FX state that this rifle will produce in 2.5 caliber, I'm gonna have to read off my notes here, 107 foot pounds of the 56 grain slug. Now, I use Zan slugs maximum uh, 37 grain slugs, and I was getting 999 feet per second on my best tune with that, which is 82 foot pounds. I was very happy with that, and it's certainly got enough power for anything I need to shoot with a 25 caliber air rifle. Now, that power level, which was basically everything maxed out, uh, with a 700 millimeter barrel to give me the, you know, it gives you the most sort of efficiency from the gun. I was getting about 20 shots before I needed to refill the gun. We'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. So I think, first of all, you have to accept that the Pantera, it's not really a hunting rifle, although you could hunt with it. It is more of a range and long range target rifle. And again, we'll talk more about that, which is fine, horses for courses, but I found myself using an awful lot of air with this gun, and it's nice that it's the Foster connector on the back here, gives you a very quick filling option. I just put my seven litre air bottle in the back of my truck. We'll start front to back. We've got an Arca rail under here, and you've seen me shoot it with this Arca bipod. You can also shoot it off an Arca tripod, that's fine. There's a barricade stop at the front there. On the left-hand side, we've got the two, um, the two pressure gauges, which give us the regulator pressure and the max fill pressure. The max fill pressure is 250 bar, and it's a 300cc carbon fiber bottle. As I said before, the plenum is another 156cc on top, but that is kind of the intermediate stage after regulation. There's a Picatinny rail on top, it's inclined 20 mm away, so it makes scope mounting super simple. And because the magazine isn't kind of sticking up from the Picatinny rail, you've got no problems with scope mounting or eye relief, anything like that. The side lever cocks the rifle. I won't cock it now because I'd have to fire it off to do things with it, but well, I will do it anyway. This is a safe drive fire. This is wound right down actually, so it's a bit quieter for in the, uh, in the armory. But that is still quite noisy without the moderator on. The side lever can be swapped to the other side if you want to, but the rifle is overall quite ambidextrous because you've got an adjustable cheek piece. It's an AR-15 style grip, which is ambidextrous, no palm swell, and the recoil pad is adjustable for length of pull and vertical position. The two little thumb screws on the side here to adjust the cheek piece up and down. I'll just uh, nip those off a little bit more. Which ones do I do there? There we go. And that moves that up and down. So you can set that as you want it. Pop that in position. And if you want to move the recoil pad at the back, you need an Allen key which will allow it to move vertically. Thus, length of pull is on these two slider bars here, and you can also adjust the angle slightly because it will pivot like that too. So, you know, shortest to longest, and you can dip it up and down exactly as you prefer, because it is, after all, more of a target rifle. 
On the underside, you can fit additional accessories here, like a mod monopod or a bag rider, if that suits you. And I think if you're gonna be taking the target route with this rifle, that's probably going to be something you want. The stock is all hard anodized aluminum. It's black, it looks very, very nice, and it's very beautifully machined. There are no machining marks or anything anywhere. The trigger is two-stage adjustable. It came to me delivered at 900 grams, which is 32 ounces, and it's incredibly crisp and easy to use. I'm quite happy with that. And you can see in the front of the trigger guard, you've got the regulator adjusters here and all the trigger adjusters. I would recommend reading FX's instructions about doing that if you are going to do it. Certain things are very allowable, other things do take away from your warranty, so just be wary of that. Having a look at some of the targets I've shot with it now, um, I can't really tell you everything I've done with this rifle because I have shot all sorts to it in various pellet weights and slug weights. FX do provide this rifle, it's the AMP2 regulator and it's got a new block on it and the new block actually is allowable so you can have a longer magazine or a thicker magazine which allows a longer projectile up to 13 millimeters. That's been specifically done for the high BC slugs for use at long range because that's the intention of this gun. If we look at some of the various pellets and slugs I've used, I've used um, JSB, Diablo, they work superbly well and give me a lot of energy actually because they're quite heavy. Those are 30, um, 34 grains near enough. And the FX, I actually shot some of the smallest groups with the gun at a lower power setting, about 30 foot pounds with the FX pellets. Now these pellets are, let me just double check on that, they are 25.4 grains. If I was hunting with it from a sedentary position, um, I would use those for sure. And to be fair, with those in dialed up to about 30 or 40 foot pounds, you will get a superb hunting rifle. It's just not super compact because the overall length on it is 1125 millimeters, which is 49 inches. And that's quite a big beast to carry around. And um, that weighs in at for the metric guys, 3.9 kilograms or 8.6 pounds for those preferring the Imperial system. I've added a piece of Picatinny on the Arca rail at the front just to put that bipod on with it, but you know, you can have that bipod in Arca fit, that's not an issue. Now, looking at some of the slugs I shot through it, I shot some of the FX hybrid slugs, which did actually work superbly well um, as an intermediate and mid-range hunting these are perhaps the best ones to use and they're only 26 grains so you're not thumping down quite as much power as long as you stay below that you know sort of golden 950 foot per second limit to make sure you're not getting anywhere near the transonics the Zan slugs at 37 grains are heavier. They do give you more energy projected at that same speed. Uh, I shot these at longer range out to 205 meters. I did get a little bit of elevation variation um, just off the bottom of the plate, but that's gonna be for another day, I think, because although I like shooting air guns at long distances, it's kind of fun. It's not a project in itself for me, and that's something you would specifically want to tune to and adapt for. Um, I tested the rifle just through a variety of scenarios and conditions. Looking at some of the groups I shot with it, you can see there's actually two five shot groups here. Um, this is at 50 meters and it is impressive. This was one of the many, many tunes I've just developed with different projectiles, but that specifically was using the um, exact heavy slugs. The smaller group is actually with the 25.4 grain FX slugs and that is quite stunning. But this group here was shot with the Zan slugs and it just goes to show that I did get a couple of quite major flyers. That was at 75 meters, that group, to be fair. Um, but, you know, close in looking at some of the groups here, that is with some of the FX pellets that worked superbly well. This group here was back at 50 meters and that's with the FX slugs. So I'm very happy with those. And again, with an air rifle like this, it's all about how much you want to tune it and what you want to do with it, because it does have a massive amount of versatility. If I take a centerfire rifle, for which I might have five types of ammunition, I'll just shoot those five types of ammunition, give the results of them. Whereas this one, you can take the same five types of ammunition and using the macro, micro adjusters on the side, as well as the regulator as well if you want to, you have got virtually unlimited realm on how much you can adjust that. And 
basically tune it for your desires and requires. Well worth remembering, don't mess with the micro and macro adjusters with it cocked. Make sure you do it between shots because if you do that, it can interfere with the trigger mechanism. Sometimes that does upset the rifle completely. I didn't do it this time because I've learned not to. I do like having the dials on the side for pressure because it does allow you to see easily when that regulator pressure is going down towards the overall fill pressure. Now, if you've got a setup and a tune that you know, you know how many shots, how many magazines worth you're gonna get through the rifle, but when you're swapping backwards and forwards all the time, tuning this, tuning that, changing this, changing that, you can very quickly run out of estimation of how much air you've used. And of course, although I was only getting 20, 25 shots at absolute maximum power, when I drop down the power scale to 20, 30, 40 foot pounds, I was getting a significantly greater number of shots, well towards the 75, 80 shots number. But again, it depends exactly on which projectile and which uh, power setting you are using, so bear that in mind. You can have it in 17, 22, 25 or 30 caliber. I have actually enjoyed shooting 25 caliber a lot. I think personally my perfect air rifle is a 2.2 or maybe 2.5 caliber running about 40 foot pounds in terms of what that's going to give me for the overall dimensions of a rifle, usage of air, etc. like that for rat shooting. But if you want a target tool, this is quite an interesting project in itself. You will enjoy tuning it and shooting it because I certainly have. On the 25 calibre, the magazine capacity is 16 rounds. So if you were to be hunting with it, you know, 16 good shots on good rats or whatever, or rabbits, that's going to be fun enough. You can get spare magazines, go back to your vehicle, refill the bottle if necessary. I would suspect a pure target shooter will possibly carry the bottle to the shooting bench with them, or maybe even a compressor at home, or even in the truck. The magazines load, like usual FX magazines, you unlock it, take that off there, wind that all the way around, pop the first projectile in there to lock it and then you just fill them back up and let that go back round to wherever it would be. You can see these have got recesses and grooves cut in them now which helps give more actual length capacity on the projectile which I said was 13 millimeters. That locks back in. With the rifle cocked that slots in position and it will slide through and of course the bolt locks open on the last shot hence why I can't put the magazine in now because it is empty. This is called the Magnum XL plenum on this 700 rifle and it does have a slight downside in the fact that if you take it off you'll see the barrel within is actually quite a complex assembly and it's got air seals on it. If you do want to change calibers on this rifle you do have to send it back to the dealer to have that done because it's got to be done professionally. It's not as simple as the crown for example where you just undo a couple of screws, slot it out, slot a new one back in, turn it over for whether you're swapping slugs or pellets etc. Again, horses for courses, it's a different rifle. The Superior Heavy STX liner is specific to this gun and it is designed for those slugs and in 25 calibre will stabilise up to a 56 grain slug which is what's going to give you that maximum power level at just below a thousand feet per second. <laughs> 
So the Pantera has been an interesting review project. It is massively powerful for an air rifle. As a rifle shooter predominantly, it's not something that's going to specifically draw me, but as a someone who wants to shoot air guns as a hobby, it is an ideal solution. I like some of the mechanical features which it shares with the dynamic. I like the forend which is slim, it's very stiff, and I like the fact that the handguard on top shrouds the barrel and you're not likely to get thumbs or fingers near it and actually be moving the barrel shroud to one side or another. That's an excellent factor with it. I like the dials on the side, but I wouldn't specifically need those on a hunting rifle, but it's great for this. The AMP2 regulator is actually very consistent and I was able to actually prove some of FX's data correct. On a 10 round string through this gun, I did manage a four foot per second extreme spread with a 1.3 standard deviation. Now, okay, they claim a 1.0 standard deviation for that, but I'm gonna let that one slide because to be fair, it is stunning. At 30, 50, and 75 meters, it was stunningly good. At 100 meters, I was shockingly impressed. I was definitely impressed when I basically fed in the velocity and the projectile BC directly from an FX chronograph, put that into my Kestrel, and you can see on camera, my first round strike center of the plate. I was very pleased with that, and that was using the Zan slugs. That's actually hitting the middle nearly. Um, I moved out beyond that. That was actually 109 meters. I then moved out beyond to 205, I think it was. And again, my first round struck the gong, but then I lost the others completely. I did realize at that stage I was running out of air pressure, but that's the thing. The enthusiasm of shooting had taken over from the fact that I had to keep going back to the truck and refilling with air. But you'll get used to that, and whatever distances you want to shoot, you will adapt to. So we zeroed at 31 meters, we've just shot at 109 meters, we're now going to go up to 205 meters. Results at 209 were pretty good and this is really pretty much straight out, 10.9 uh, mils, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The wind's directly at me. Awesome, we got a first round hit. Um, the fact I'm smiling is quite a good recommendation for the rifle because a project has to really drive me and interest me to make me want to really experiment with it. I know as far as FX rifles go, I often hardly scratch the surface in terms of what tuning capability you can do with them. I did a lot more with the, uh, the M3, which is a smaller, more compact gun. I did have a lot more use for in, uh, crossover in hunting as well as longer range targets. And I did have the four barrel options for that as well, which gave me a huge excuse to experiment with it. But I quite like the Pantera. It's, it's quirky. It is very big, it's very long. I've got to take the moderator off to actually fit it in my rifle cabinets. But I think if you buy one, you will certainly enjoy the challenges it brings to shooting. Well, I'd love to read all your comments on FX air rifles because I know some of you are massive FX fans and you will have done far more experimentation than I ever will. But I hope you've enjoyed my sort of freshman's look at it because I don't do huge amounts with FX. I'm more of a rifle guy. So I give you a bit of a, a, a different perspective on it from someone not totally ingrained within the sport already. Please like, subscribe, comment and click the notification bell so you can keep track of my regular uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.